Okay, I thought I'd do a off the cuff video as I'm making ammunition boxes for the 88mm pit and also I'm doing some tarps to pull over the top of them because I want to be most of it covered in snow and I know there's a lot of people that have uh, do have done some brilliant videos on uh, tarp hoardings but I thought I'd do an off the cuff one and just throw my my method into the mix uh, the one we're actually going to be making is actually this tarpaulin here so the difference between my tarpaulins is that you don't actually have to glue them to your items if they're barrels or anything like that also mine's got I put tie and tie eyes in it as well so it can actually be tied down as you can see in the back here there's one there that I've got a little bit of rope holding it down and another type that I actually do as well which I'll show you is just a plain sheet that you can actually just wrap round or fold round uh, barrels or storage or stowage or anything like that so we'll go across and we'll get started okay ammunition boxes now these are the ones out of the gun pit now I want to create a tarpaulin, not to cover the whole lot, but so you can still see that the the ammo, bo ammo boxes. Now I'm going to be using just ordinary tissue paper. I requisitioned this from my young lady's uh, shoe box. Uh, the tissue paper cost me nothing, but the shoes cost me a hell of a lot. But that's another story. So that's what we need to start off with and what I'm going to do is put you on pause and I'm going to move you again because uh, this is very going to be very difficult to show you right back with a bit of tissue paper now this piece of tissue paper I've cut just big enough to cover over the ammunition boxes because I want it to come over that way like so so it's hanging over the front so you can still see the ammunition boxes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a piece of plastic. So we'll just start here so I can see better. Right. And all I'm going to do is just mark a line around the outside. This is going to be the actual on a tarpaulin. If you see, looks at the tarpaulin, they've got a uh, like a hem, fairly wide hem that runs all the way around the edge, and they've got eyelets in it for tying down. So just run that all the way around there. What I normally do then is because they're, they're very fiddly to lift up, is use a ruler. I hope this is in shot because I'm I'm too busy concentrating on what I'm doing. Just get a ruler, hold it down, use your pencil, lift that edge up, and just crease it along. Ooh. But don't do that, don't come back on yourself. So you've got that little lip. Right, so. Yeah? And just do that. Well, I'm just doing three sides because the fourth side is going to be down the back of the uh, ammo boxes and we're not going to see it. So I don't see no point in doing that. So that's the third edge. Second edge, sorry. Shouldn't have done. And believe me, it's a lot more easier uh, when you're actually on top of it than you are when you're sort of uh, trying to do it at arm's length. Alright. 
So you get the idea, you've done a seam all the way around the edge. And next thing I put on is some eyelets. Now, what I'm actually using is a piece, I don't know if we can see that, it's a bit of a uh, 2.3 uh, styrene, round. It has, it has got a hole in the middle. Now, that is still too big, it's the smallest I can find. So what I actually do is, if you can see on there, I cut a small piece off, I put it into my drill, and I just lay a sanding stick on it, and spin it round, and just take it down. Now, there's no set measurement I don't work on there, just to it looks right. It's down to two mil now. So it's just taking it down to a size that is actually going to fit on this seam along the edge to make your eyelets. And then all you do is, when you've done it, just get your scalpel or your, your knife and just cut some really thin, as thin as you can get them. I haven't got a jig for this. I do this all by eye. Cut some really thin circles like that. So we've got all your thin circles cut. And then what we do, we stick them on. With, I just use a little bit of super glue, and I find me super glue. is a little tiny super glue. I will start in the corner and now I've lost my wax pencil. Now that is going to cause problems. Totally unorganized. I wonder if I can pick it up with one of them. No, I'm not going to be able to. We'll try that one. Right, I'm going to put you on pause because I need to get a wax pencil. Okay, I've found a wax pencil. So, I've got some oily down here. So all we need to do then is just put the eyelets on to where you've blocked your glue. Nothing too complicated, just I normally go one there, and then I'm gonna go one in between each of them. And then just put eyelets on until you get your oh, there you go, there you go like so so we do that all the way through just not playing bubble today there we go so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead I'm going to put one there and one in there and then sort of equal distance up the side. And I'm struggling at the top there, so I'm gonna put you on pause, do them, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, I've got all my little eyelets glued on after sticking a few to my finger and good knows what else. So I've put all the eyelets on. Uh, well, you can actually tie with these when we're finished. So we've uh, we'll move that to one side, and the next thing we need to do, we need to get this onto our ammunition boxes. Now the way I do it is I use a piece of ordinary cling film. I'm just off shot there. And what I do is I wrap the cling film, maybe a little bit too close with the camera there. I lift it up a fraction. There we go. So I've wrapped the cling film round my ammo boxes like so. And I'll cut this big chunk off the end when I find a pair of scissors. This was a unplanned video. So right. So I've got my ammunition boxes and I've got them covered in cling film. Now I'm going to use PVA, so in my little dish I'm going to put some PVA 
and also I'm going to add just a couple of drops of water just to make it a little bit more pliable. And then all we do is we cover the area that you feel that the tarpaulin should go on, like so. All the way down the back here. And then what we do is we use our tarpaulin, lay it on like so. Sorry, I'm out of shot there. And then we just start pressing it down to make your creases. So, so you've got your tarpaulin over and roughly how you want it and then just give it all another coat of PVA. Like so. I am in shock so I'm too busy watching what I'm doing and I'm not watching the screen just to make sure that I'm actually in shot. Just make sure you get it under them lips as well on the seams, not seams, they're, uh, what is the correct name for them? It's eluded me now. So all we do is go all the way around, make sure it's all well covered in PVA. I know it looks a bit of a mess. But actually I find doing it this way you get some nice creases. Pleats. Like so. And just smooth any big lumps off. And we're going to leave that to dry. The great thing about doing it this way, I'll lay that down like that, can you see that? The great thing about doing it this way is that if you do one that you don't really like, you can take it off because of the cling film. Well, we take the cling film off anyway. Another thing that I do as well is just a little bit of water, clean the brush out, and just run along this edge with the water and that will take away the PVA from the actual edge of it all the way around so when you come to take it off you haven't got all PVA hanging over so that's how that is now now I'm going to leave that to dry because it takes quite a few hours to dry as you can imagine so I'm going to put that to one side I'm going to Put you on pause for a second but i'm going to show you a different method that i use to make ordinary flat tarpaulins okay what i've got here is just a block of foam uh, which you've probably seen quite a few times when i've made bits and pieces and all i've done is cover, covered it in a piece of cling film now this is the other half to the uh, canvas that I've already done. Uh, it's got the eyelets on, it's done exactly the same, there's no difference. Fold the edge over, put the eyelets on. And all we do is we paint onto the cling film. Like so. And put your, when it doesn't get st stuck to your finger, and just lay your tissue paper on top and then just give it another coat of PVA so I'm thinking to myself they're miles away then so that's all we do with that, give it a good coat of PVA. Like 
like so. Now, this one's been torn in half, so I want to keep the edge as defined as possible. I want to find some tissue, there's a bit of tissue, that'll do. So, if you just run around with water, as you can see, look, it's just taking the PVA away from the edge leaving the edge so if you wanted a sort of torn canvas hanging down on a uh, bunker door or something like that that will as you can see that it, it takes the shape up but just running a little bit of water along it takes away that PVA and just leaves it where it should be left now we're going to leave that to dry the same with the other one and then when it's dry I'll come back and we'll then I can show you how you can actually use this not just on hanging up there's a little trick that I found that uh, when you actually come to paint it you, it'll actually make it flexible again so you can actually pull it over different items and tie it but I'm going to leave these to dry and we sh I'll come back to you and uh, then we'll go from there Okay, it's been a little bit of time, a few hours, and as you can see, it's dried. Now, I'd be quite happy to leave that on there and paint, but just to show you, it will quite easily pull off. We'll I'll just take the, take the cling film off. There's your... Ammunition boxes, and there's your actual cover that sits on it quite nice. Now you can paint that and do what you want to it. Also, these holes, you, these little ties, once you get it painted, uh, you can actually tie down with that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this little bit of uh, cling film back over for the simple reason is I like to paint it in situ where it is. So I should put that back over on the top like so because I have found that when you paint this well, we'll, go back, well, we'll go over to this one that's the little sheet we did flat sheet there we go which uh, is quite stiff but I've found that if you paint it and put a few drops of thinners into your paint, what happens is that it makes it go soft for some unreason, uh, very much like material. So what I'm using here, I'm going to use a bit of uh, German grey and I move the camera a little bit. I've got a little bit of German grey and all I'm going to do is just put a few drops of uh, thinners in and what I'm going to do I'm going to have to change glasses Can we just give that oh it's a bit dark but this is ex this is just uh, showing you. It is a bit too dark, isn't it? Really, it's not very uh, uh, canvasy looking. All right, we'll go to a bit of a, a lighter grey. We'll, we'll change the colour halfway through. That's not grey. That's silver. There we go. Grey. Light grey. Bit of light grey. Few drops of thinners. Ah, that's better. So could do with a better paintbrush timer. So we'll give that all a pack of 
components. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Right, I've just given that a coat over, I know it don't look very pretty. But there again, tarp awnings are not very pretty. Well, mind you, you can paint it whichever colour you want. You can paint it with uh, use some khaki, or what other colours are they? Green, anything like that, you can paint it. This one, I actually gonna go, I'm going to use a, this bit of grey, and I'm going to use this in situ. What I will do when it's all dry though, I will give it a, probably a black wash and do a bit of uh, uh, sort of weathering on it. The back bit I'm not too bothered about because we're not going to see. And we can trim that up before we put it on. done. I'm going to leave that to dry and then I should come back to you. Okay it's touch dry now. Now I hope I can... if you notice now what's happened it's gone back to being really soft when the camera focuses. It's gone back to being really soft and supple. Now, you can use this because it will react like a tarpaulin. You can pull it down over things and it's going to react like a proper tarpaulin is going to react, if you can see that. So you can actually tie this down, tie it up in this state and then it just you give it a few hours and it goes back to being a solid piece again uh, I think it's just the thinners in the actual uh, paint that reacts with the PVA as you can see that it's like a piece of material now so it can be used in loads and loads of different ways this is not really a, a good example if you've got storage and that and you want to Put it over the storage but you want the storage to really be seen as well uh, that w it works it does move on from that one to this one now this one i'm just going to do a little bit of weathering on and make it uh, look like a tarpaulin also what i shall do i'll bring this one back because it would be easier to show you uh, the little rivets a uh, little uh, tying eyes. If you get yourself a small drill and just drill them out. So you've got the holes cleaned out. Uh, then you can put your string through. I personally use wire but everyone is up to their own choice. You can put your piece of string through and you can tie down with that, no problems at all. So this one now is going back into the gun pit. This will be the one that you, I shall show you, or oh, I've shown you at the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna get this one finished off and back in the gun pit. So thank you very much for joining me. Any questions, leave them in the, in the, uh, box below and uh, that's my little take on doing tarpaulins.